Okay, our another, we have another message for our beloveds today. So, are you ready? Because this one is going to knock your socks off. So, you have been having a lot of ups and downs, pains, aches, worries, struggles, lots and lots of meteors and asteroids hitting you from the left and from the right, from your last remaining family members to one of your beloved friends. It feels like everyone is leaving you, and yet you are calmly calm because you are learning whether people stay with you or leave you doesn't change the you-ness of you anymore. So here is our message to the collective, to you all out there listening. When you begin to express yourself as the true unicorn or snowflake that you are and others do not like, how you look, smell, taste, feel, or express yourself. In the past, you might have chased after them, seeking their validation, seeking their approval, seeking to be invited home again. But now, as a collective, you guys really don't care. You are simply setting Rome ablaze with your own fire in your own corner, even if somebody else has started a blaze elsewhere in Rome. You are adding your spark to burn this sucker down as quickly as you can. So when you see anger, distress, frustration, vitriolic behavior, because the effervescent bubbles that we have spoken of in the fizzy water of the ocean are bubbling up to the surface. It feels like a cauldron bubbling right now, a witch's brew that is here to burn you all, to cook you all, to make you all just miserable as you die. But what you don't realize is that these are the bubbles that have been suppressed for so long below the ocean that we've been speaking of that are finally, finally coming up to the surface, right? And we told you all months ago, no more sitting on the fence. What are you willing to live for? And what are you willing to die for? So for our another, she has, says, I, she has said, I am willing to uh, die for truth by speaking truth. And now she has stated very clearly, I am willing to die of COVID-19 because I am not willing to take the vaccine. This is a stand that she has taken. Not only she has taken, not anyone else, nor does anyone else have to take the stand. And yet so many are offended by what violates their own version of truth. So the question that we have for you all is, why? Why does her version or anyone else's version of truth offend you so much when it is just merely another person's opinion or belief system or foundation upon which they live their lives? You have coexisted with people who have carried a variety of diseases. You have been around people who have carried the AIDS vaccine, hepatitis in its various forms, right? You have had people with syphilis and gonorrhea and all of these nasty ass diseases who have touched doorknobs, who have suckled, if you will, on a water fountain spigot or spout. You touch the same toilet handle 
And in the past, you never cared because you didn't think you were going to die from it, just maybe get sick from it. But the question that we have is, do you really think you're going to die from COVID? You know, it, it is dangerous. There's no doubt about that. But what we're trying to point out is, how can you well now survive this pandemic when you have had other dangerous and deadly diseases that have also been surrounding you and you didn't have that fear-based hatred in your heart? Would you have forced everyone to get a vaccine against Ebola, against AIDS against syphilis, against typhoid fever, against headaches, against ingrown toenails. We're just trying to point out that you have had so many aches and pains and worries and stories that you shared, yet you were not willing to Harm others with your words like you are now. You would not have been so painfully cruel to those that you claimed to love in the past because you had more compassion and you had more empathy for the plight and the worries and the suffering of others. And now guess what? You are stuck in your respective camps of upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. And then you will join together in the middle of this boxing ring, duking it out. But none of you are going to actually solve the world's problems if you continue to bash one another in the face while Rome burns. So our question is, what did Martin Luther King come to teach? What did Rosa Parks come to teach? What did Buddha, the Dalai Lama, Gandhi, Nelson Mandela? There are others who have come together and who have pointed out the indiscretions of this world, if you will but they still did it with a place and a voice and an energy and an expression of love. John Lennon love, hippie love, the kind where you come together in a field, right? Woodstock, where you're squished so close together with one another without a worry that you will die now. The times are not now to do that again. But we want you to envision a world where you are no longer locked in your respective homes out of fear and worry that you will either catch the virus or pass it on to another person who is vulnerable but instead envision a world where you feel safe enough to come together in a Woodstock event where you just simply are love and have no worry because the vibration is that of love. How do you get there where you cannot worry about having a vaccination card or a health card of, have you been tested? What are your genes limitations? How can you get back to a space where you just simply trust that the person to the left, to the right, in front and behind is not going to kill you somehow because you are simply love. So you need to vibrate on that expression of humanity where you can all come back together and simply be love and not harm one another. 
with your words or with your viruses, bacteria, germs, or invasive thought processes. So we wish to inspire inclusion again today because as our another has learned, when she speaks her mind, it does make her feel better in certain ways because she's tired of being repressed and suppressed and immobilized in so many ways, but it doesn't create unity. It doesn't create harmony. It doesn't create peace. And most importantly, it continues to create division amongst those that she cares for the most, that she wants to call her friends and her allies and her family and her loved ones, those who will support her as she goes through difficult journeys and whom she would support during difficult journeys. But you can't do that when you are looking at each other with that stink eye because you feel not heard, not respected, not honored, not trusted, and most importantly, dismissed. Dismissed as having an opinion that differs and therefore you must be wrong. The question is, why must everyone agree on how you solve this pandemic? Why must everyone agree that you either not wear masks or that you all become inoculated? Why can there not be multiple expressions of how you each respectively heal? Some people heal through vaccinations. Some heal through medical involvement. Some heal through holistic um, participation. Some heal through just fasting. Some heal through hiking in nature. Some heal through walking the uh, Camino. There is no singular cure to anything because you are unique individuals. And we return to the very beginning, which is you are unicorns and you are snowflakes. Figure out a way to cohabitate and to love one another while honoring your unique differences. And that comes through collective, active listening and honoring everyone with differing opinions and belief systems and finding a way of creating a beautiful puzzle mirage with each puzzle peach fi piece finding its unique place within this collective energetic imprint of who you all are. So we hope that you all are learning that divisive language and behavior is no solution. It may make you feel good at the moment, but in the long run, it does not create collaborative communication. It does not create cohesiveness. It does not create collaborative cohabitation. It does not create collaborative co-creation. It is your journey now to find your way out of this paper sack or paper bag, as Kati likes to call it. And until you do, expect to still be breathing into that paper bag because you are having a collective anxiety attack and you need to actually slow down the amount of oxygen that you are breathing in because it overstimulates you and creates more of the anxiety. So sometimes CO2 <laughs> is not a bad thing because it slows down what there is too much of. So we shall leave it there for you all to unwrap and to decipher for those who are interested and for those who aren't, that's fine as well. Everyone is finding their place on stage in this uh, active play called Your Lives. So 
and enjoy it. And we shall join you again tomorrow or the day after, depending upon how our another is feeling as she is still having ups and downs because life itself is having ups and downs. And so it is. Namaste.